Good morning, church. My name is Pastor Adam. I am chosen, challenged, and charged, and it's just a cold, I promise. All right, so first things first. I want to thank you for being with us this morning. I recognize there are a lot of things that might have kept you uh, or prevented you from being here today, and I'm so glad that you chose to be churchgoers. <laughs> to those of you online, I don't blame you. <laughs> Wimps. So today we're continuing our Easter series entitled, What Had Happened Was. This week we're starting, studying Mark chapter 13, and I have the great pleasure of sharing that with you all. So, in Mark chapter 13, what had happened was the following. So, we start off, we see Jesus and the disciples leaving the temple when one of them points out all of the beauty of the stones and the buildings, and Jesus quickly takes this opportunity to educate the disciples about the end times. <laughs> he says that not one stone will be left on another. All of them will be thrown down. The disciples appropriately became a little curious about when this is going to happen and how they'll know it's all coming. So Jesus then warns us about false prophets and the difficulty that will come in the last days. He tells the disciples to be on their guard because they will be called on to bear witness of him. Uh, so Jesus also takes the opportunity to direct us to listen to the Holy Spirit and to have him guide us in these times. So then he points to some dark days for believers, saying that everyone will hate you because of me. All right? Uh, and he also says, those days of distress unequaled from the beginning, when God created the world until now and never to be equaled again. So Jesus warns us against false, again against false prophets, telling us to be on our guard. He then makes it clear that nobody, nobody, knows when this is all going to happen. Jesus makes it a point to tell us several times and several ways to be alert, be on guard. He says it a lot of different ways. And watch so that we are ready when he returns. <laughs> so let's all be ready when that time comes. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you so much for this opportunity to trust you, and I thank you for this time to come together and worship you. Uh, we thank you for not giving us a spirit of fear, uh, but of power, of love, uh, and of a, a sound mind. We thank you so much for everything that we're going to experience in your spirit through this service, and we just pray that you would guide us through this time. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hey, I think we should give the Lord a hand. I think confident hands are lifted high. I think that's a sign of confidence. Confidence in our Lord and his provision, confidence in our faith. I think we would all agree. A confident hand is typically lifted high, right? How many of you would, by raising your hands, would say, I'm confident in the Lord's provision in my life? Would you raise your hand? Oh, wow. So we are confident. So confident hands are lifted high. How many of you would, would, would say, I'm confident that God's going to get us through this. Okay. How many of you would raise your hand and say, I have a testimony to, to share about God's faithfulness to me. Anybody, you have a testimony that, I'm not saying you have to share it, but you do have one. <laughs> I'm not going to make you sign it. I'm not going to call on you for, but how many of you, you say, yes, if, if a gun were put to my head and we're not that kind of church. Not that kind of church, not on your first visit. If a gun was put to my head and they said, testify to God's sustaining provision in your life, how many would say, I, I've got something to share? All right, okay, so let's have two of you do that. <laughs> just, just two of you, would you stand right you are, talk loud so we can hear you? Yeah, Chantel, tell us, yeah. Mine's simple, I have my for like four days straight, mm. and this morning, it Isn't that something? Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, Nora. Well, if you're on the prayer team, you know that I yeah. have a natural prayer for her. That's right. And we've been looking for a new place to do our classes for months. And we have pictures and we thought we have a sign to leave that. Praise the Lord. Still change, but as of May 1st. Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. That is awesome. That's good. We are thanking God for his provision and for providing for us. And then a new partner, yeah. someone else is coming in with us to have a boutique in that same area. So we are thrilled. That's wonderful. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Dustin, don't let my time tick down. This is the spirit moving. This is, don't, don't take my time away. Um, like, so, so that was pretty easy. There were two. How about two more? You can testify to God's pr- provision in your life. Yeah, Anna Mars. Amen. When being in position that we've been enabled, even to buy us, and God is like sending somebody different, it's just to give you more for God. Yeah. It is just un- unbelievable. God is, you need to prepare to teach, and right now you're not ready for it, so go to school and teach. I will take care of everything that is around you. Amen. Food, bills, and everything. Even when my husband is like struggling because he says it's not a Right, right. He's always got my husband around and say, hey, look what I'm doing with your family. And at some point, my husband <coughs> around and say, please come. I can see what That's right. And that is just like, yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. One more. See, see how simple that was? More. Yes, Hi. Right. Yeah. Praise the Lord, Jeannie. Praise the Lord. We love you. We love you. You know, the truth is that we could go around and each of us tell us multiple, multiple, multiple stories. Um, of what uh, God is doing in our lives. Uh, the, your beautiful barista, my wife Kim back there, she was telling me a story this week. Our dryer's kind of been on the fritz a little bit. It makes <laughs> the most horrible sound you've ever heard. Um, and so we have um, my son, Adam, and his girlfriend, Lauren, who've been staying with us. And um, she didn't want to wake them up. So was it Friday morning, honey? You put something in the dryer, and she's like, oh, I don't want it to wake them up. Don't let there be a noise. So she put it in the dryer, and there was no noise. It just kind of did what it was supposed to do. And so she's, you know, getting ready, bebopping, praise the Lord. You know, the dryer didn't make any noise. The dryer didn't make any noise. Thank you, Jesus, for the day. Oh, it was yesterday, wasn't it? And so, and then she had to get in the car and drive to Muhammad because they had a very important work day yesterday. Going to go back there today. A lot of work to be done. Thank you, all of you who were doing that. Uh, Mark, Lisa, Kim, that, and so many of you that I can name my name and I shouldn't have started. Um, so then Kim walks upstairs and she hadn't realized that it had snowed. <laughs> so she walked upstairs and she's like, no, no noise in the dryer, no noise in the dryer. She walks outside, looks outside, sees the snow. She's like, God! <laughs> and she heard the spirit of God within her say, hey now, I made the mountains and I can move them whenever I want to. Um, and so I want you to know that no matter what you are going through, what we are going through, um, the, the, the one who puts the mountains in our way, if indeed they are in our way, is the same one who can move them at the mention uh, or at the snap of a finger. Or you know, all he has to do is give the word. Um, he has not let us down, church, and he has no plans to let us down. Today we wanted to do things differently only because the... The climate, the culture kind of dictates that we do things a little bit differently. Uh, You should be having family meetings in your home. We should be reminding each other of how to do very simple things like washing our hands the right way. I know you've heard you could, you know, sing happy birthday. You can also sing Jesus loves me, any number of things, but um, to wash your hands appropriately and keep distances. And we've heard a lot of that and we need to hear those things. But I figured today we needed to have a little bit of a family meeting. And so part of my role as pastor is also, you know, father. <laughs> you can laugh now. Uh, but that's, that's part of the gig. And so I just wanted to kind of come to you as a voice of peace and comfort and kind of share a few things that God's been doing in uh, my family's life and the, fam- the, the church family <clears throat> and in the world. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on in the life of the Kellers to this week. And it's a, it's a family meeting, so... I'm going to share a little bit. So uh, some of you know, several months back, God called Kim to step down from her career as an occupational therapist. And the job he gave her was to put people over projects and really invest in caring for people in her life, her friends, her church, her family. Uh, some of you know her mom and dad, Bud and Jean, live at Westminster Village, and they're, they're needing more and more care 
And so she's been stepping into that role, and, and we've been loving that, and it's a great change in our family. Well, because of that, she stepped away from that income. And so um, my goal when I finished my doctorate degree was to find a, a part-time job of sorts in the community. You know, we talk a lot about the, um, the sacred-secular divide and how it's all sacred and how um, every place is worship, every place is sacred. So I wanted a job in the community where I could get to know more people and kind of be the light of Jesus there. And God led me to a company called um, Epiphany Farms Hospitality Group. They own five restaurants here in town. And, and so I got a job with them and um, helping with um, human resources and uh, accounts payable, that sort of thing, uh, legal I know, me. Um, But I'm really enjoying it and really getting to know them. They've got over 200 um, employees and they're just a great bunch of people. And so a week ago, uh, they asked me if I would consider uh, going full-time. I was only working uh, 24, 26 hours a week, something like that. And they, I said, well, what would that look like? And so we just started talking about what it would look like to go full time. And they appreciate the work and, and what they say I bring to it. And I trust them with that. So we were having a good conversation. And I thought, wow, God, you called Kim away from this profession. And now you've, you've called me to this and you're providing. And we've got a credible staff that keeps things going at the church. And how exciting it is. So they asked me, will you go full time? And so I took, you know, about two days to think about what that might look like. And then two days later, the whole climate at work seemed to change a bit. And I thought, ruh something's something something's happened. See, one of the things that I do is I help communicate with new hires. And so there was a list of about 15 new hires written on the board. And if over the next couple of days, I noticed that like names were dropping like flies. So I'm like, oh, are they quitting before they start? What's going on? And then I heard um, Thursday, Todd, don't come into work. Don't come into work because all the managers have to have a emergency meeting. Do you know that there are restaurants and organizations and churches around the world that are having emergency meetings? In fact, we just had one yesterday. Thank you, staff, for coming in for that. And so they had an emergency meeting and I came in uh, Friday and the first thing I noticed was that all of the new hire names were erased off of the board and I thought, oh no, I'm about to lose my job. And so we um, went through the morning routine. I did all of the uh, accounting that I needed to do. And then before I was going to leave, I'm like, hey, do we need to meet about anything? And um, the boss said, yeah, we got to talk. And so we went in and they said that they've had to let go of everyone that's been hired within the last 90 days. And so that's 20-some people total. And that's me as well. And I really hate it because I I enjoyed working with them. Um, But we talked and they uh, were emotional and they said, we hope that this blows over. In two weeks, everything may change. And we hope that, you know, you'll be back and we can use you again. And uh, we may call you in for special projects because the truth is we do need you. And, um, and I said, well, you know what? I don't have anything waiting, so I'll just be here Tuesday morning at 10 to volunteer and do what you need, and then I'll leave. And they're like, what, what? And I'm like, oh, I work in the church world. That's how we do it. And, <laughs> and they're like, we're not used to that. And I said, well, I'll be there Tuesday morning to help out, and I will, um, until God brings something else along, if that's his will. But my thought was, um, as they were telling me, I thought, God, you got me up this morning um, with no pain, no emotional trauma, even knowing this was coming. You got me up excited to see what the day brings. And I got to tell you, as I was hearing that I had to step down from this position, I got excited. It reminded me a little bit of God sitting on the front row of a classroom, perhaps an elementary student. And the world has asked a question. And God on the front row, so excited. (laughs) I know, I know, I know, I know, pick me, pick me. That's what I visioned God at in that moment as I and you and the whole world ask the question, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? What is happening? What's, what's going on? God knows. And so then I went home and I told Kim and the kids, I'm like, I'm excited to see what God's going to do. I, he's going to see us through, you know, that mortgage will get paid whether we pay it or, you know, whether he comes through or not. So he's got to help us. And we're not worrying, not at all. Well, then um, Jillian got a call saying that, or got a um, message that ISU classes are going to now go online. Um, So those friends that she sees, they're not going to see. Pray for our college students because you didn't know that the end was coming that quickly. Um, And then, uh, let's see, Samuel got a call saying school was out to the 30th. 
And then Adam's girlfriend, Lauren, um, got a call saying that her mission trip to Belize that she was going on in just a couple weeks was canceled, non-refundable. Um, and then they both got a call saying um, that they might as well not come back to the dorms or come and get your stuff out, something like that. Is that right, Addie? Come and get your stuff out and then classes will go online. So now here's Lauren. My, may I call her my daughter-in-law? I probably can't say that yet, but you know. Um, <laughs> I'm very quick to embrace. It's just who I am. Um, but, my, uh, but Lauren, she says, you know, I've been roommates with these ladies for several years and was really looking forward to the next couple months before we had to part ways. And so that's coming sooner. So it's just, you know, it's, it just kind of stinks, you know, to think that what's going on in the world is having ramifications on all of us. And, and if we went around the room, you could tell your story too. That's just the story of the Kellers and it, it's fine. And, but it's affecting you as well, I know. Um, some of you, um, I mean, when we think about churches that are not meeting, and I talked to several of the pastors of churches who decided not to meet today, and the, the biggest factor that I saw was many of the churches, they have many more senior citizens and elderly than, than we do. We decided not yet. Next week we may. We're going to take it week by week. But you guys are a young bunch, most of you, most. Most are, most. Most are very, very young. Hi, Debbie. Um, most are... Hey, friend. Um, and uh, Vernon, hi. Um, there's just, yeah. Oh, you're welcome. You're, you're welcome. Steve, I didn't pick on you. Just, just the old lady. Um, so, uh, but, <laughs> but we decided to continue meeting. We took some measures, the offering plates, the hand sanitizer, the gloves, um, we're, we're doing what we can. Even in the kids' department, they've made several changes, and we're going we're gonna to play it week by week. Say, so stay close to your email, stay close to, um, stay close to um, Facebook and all of those things. Um, I want to share some scripture with you today, and we want to pray. Um, but I want to share something that our friend Shelly Welke sent us. Her sister is a scientist, a biochemist, something like that biogenetics, and has worked with the State Department and in disease control. Just a few things I want you to know. This um, COVID-19 originated uh, in bats, um, as with many other diseases, where there was sh- uh, they were consuming them. There's lower regulations there. Um, China, yes. Um, so there's biological similarities between bats and humans, and so therefore there can be problems when that happens. It is a new virus, meaning that it is not, uh, it's not uh, it infiltrated our system yet, and so it's going to cause problems. Um, but one of the reasons that people are so worried about it is not because the disease itself is life-threatening, but because the healthcare system could not take the influx of patients if it went through. The majority of people who will get it um, will survive. Um, the media is fueling, they're, they're reporting I don't know that people need a lot of help panicking. That, that happens, but the media is a part of that. But uh, they're saying no reason to panic, no reason to hoard toilet paper or bottled water, um, no reason to hose your children down with Lysol. Um, don't take medical supplies from medical workers who need it. Um, the reason that a lot of people aren't testing because those tests aren't available, you know these things, watch for them. The symptoms are fever, dry cough, weakness, um, respiratory disease. It's droplet-based, so be careful with getting our um, droplets on, on each other. I say all of this. The other thing that's interesting is um, this. they knew that this was coming, the scientific community, so we thank God for those who work in those areas. They've known for several years that this was coming, and they've encouraged governments to prepare early. I was reading that in Thailand. They're one of the most prepared. They have been preparing for years. They knew that it was coming. Um, and so uh, understand that. Um, we ask our kids to come in because we're going to close in prayer and, and we're a little early and that's okay, but kids, just bear with me. I want to share with you real quick from John chapter 20 and everyone just kind of lean in. What Jesus said when his people were afraid. And I don't think a lot of us are afraid of this thing. I'm not sensing that. It might be in your home. I don't know. But just as your pastor, father, friend, brother, I just want to tell you that um, what we've been telling you through this whole service, that fear does not stand a chance when we stand in the confidence 
of God. He has not given us a spirit of fear. In fact, when he breathes his spirit on us, it's a spirit of peace. So I want to read this gorgeous scripture with you. Jesus has already died. He's been resurrected. He appears. We're going to celebrate this in a few weeks. He appears before disciples, before Magdalene. And, and here he comes and, and appears before a larger group. So stay with me. It's in John chapter 20. It says, on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were, they were afraid of the Jews who had just killed Jesus. So they were huddled and afraid. Jesus came and stood among them, even though the door was locked. That's cool. And he said to his afraid disciples, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you out to be messengers of peace, I should add. And when he had said this, he breathed on them healthily <laughs> and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, stay with me. I know we've got some noise going on and you know, families are noisy. So in our family meeting, you just kind of stay with me, okay? Um, they had every reason to be afraid. And I want you to notice what Jesus did not do. And I want, you to, I want us to take our cues from Jesus. Jesus did not walk in the room and say, why did you abandon me? I just died on a cross for you. I was pierced for your transgressions and you walked away one by one while I was on the cross. And now I find you locked, cowering in a room. How dare you? I might've been tempted to say that, I'll be honest, but Jesus did not. Can I tell you what Jesus also didn't do because it's not helpful? He didn't yell at people who are afraid. He didn't chastise them in any way. He didn't say, as many of our brothers and sisters on Facebook and in the media are saying, he did not stay, why are you afraid? Why are you panicking? Jesus did not give us a spirit of fear. Your fear is demonic. Jesus didn't say that. I wonder why Jesus didn't say that because you don't yell at a child when the child's afraid. That's not helpful. Does fear come from the Lord? Absolutely not. Does fear come from the enemy? Absolutely. But when someone's afraid, church, you don't scold them. When someone's afraid, you don't call them demonic. That's not Jesus-y. When people are afraid, you say, peace. God's peace I give to you. And so when Jesus walked in the room, kids, all the kids in the room, when Jesus walked in the room and the disciples were afraid, you know what Jesus did? He did just like this. <sighs> Isn't that cool? The Bible says that Jesus breathed his spirit on them. And when Jesus breathed his spirit on them, it was the spirit of peace. This means if you're walking in fear, choose to be filled with the spirit. If you're walking in fear, choose to live close to Jesus. If you're walking in fear, have Jesus breathe on you the breath of life by saying, Jesus, forgive me. Help me to, touch, help me to trust you. Fill me with your spirit. Because when the spirit of the Lord comes in, there is peace. Amen. When the spirit of the Lord invades, there is peace. And so I want you kids to receive Jesus' peace into your heart and mind today. Teenagers, I want you to receive the peace and comfort of your powerful Lord into your very present reality today, into the hallways of your school, into your homes, into your uncertainties. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? I want you to receive the peace of Jesus into your life today. Adults, I want you to receive the peace of Jesus into the unknown. All of this may change in two weeks. We may get more information. But until then, we serve a God who still speaks peace. He still speaks peace. Very much, he is in control. And so I want to ask you this morning, and I want you all to kind of focus your attention up here. What are you anxious about? What are you afraid of? 
What are you worried about? Kids? Children? Anything you're afraid of? Anything you're worried about? Teenagers? What's consuming your thoughts? What's consuming your anxieties and your fears? Adults, what about you? I'm going to have our pastors just find positions in the room. We're going to have Pastor Adam over here, or Pastor Zach over here, Pastor Adam over here, Pastor Karin's going to be in this corner, uh, Pastor Celia's going to be by the sound booth, and then uh, Pastor Lisa is going to be over in this corner. And what I want you to do as we close today, and it's just a very different way of closing, I want you with your family, and if you're by yourself today, you can either go by yourself or stand with another uh, uh, family, someone who will kind of have you come with them. And you're just going to go to the pastors, and the pastors are going to say to whoever's in the family, they're going to say, what are you worried about? What are you afraid of? What are you anxious about? And children, don't be afraid to tell the pastor because they're going to pray with you. Teenager, tell them what's on your mind. Adults, tell them what we can pray for. And all the pastors are going to do is pray a prayer for you. We're going to take our time with this. We've got plenty of time. The pastors are going to pray with you, and they're just going to ask that God blesses you. And and Pastor Zach's going to say, and the other pastors are going to say, peace be unto you. And they're just going to breathe the peace of God safely over you and your family. As a people, the people of God, we have always gone through difficult times. Jesus said there would be difficult times. I think it's great that he told us. He gave us a heads up. He says there will be trouble, and I think that's great. How loving. He said there would be trouble, but he always said that he would be with us. He's Emmanuel, God incarnate, God in flesh, God with us. And so as we go into the next few weeks, and who knows what's going to happen, God is with us. And I don't want you to forget that. He is right there with you. And when he speaks peace, the spirit of fear has to leave. Okay? Church, I love you. I love you so much. And I don't want us to be a people of fear. I want us to be a people of confidence who tell the story of Jesus and who testify to his greatness and his love, and his provision, and his healing. Before I have you go and pray, look at me. This is your church family. If you need anything, you need to let me know. You need to let the pastors know. You need to let your ministry directors know. If you need anything during this time, if you need toilet paper, (laughs) I'll get some from Pastor Celia, and I'll bring it to you. Um. If you need anything, don't go through it alone. Next week, I'm sure we'll be meeting, but if not, you'll hear. And if we get to the point where we have to meet in homes and live stream, which we will be able to do, I want you to invite scared people into your home with you that you work with and in your family. And I want you to make your home a hospital of peace and welcome people in. Wherever you go this week, don't get caught up in the political talk. That's not helpful. Don't tell people that their fear is demonic. That's not helpful. Don't scold people for being afraid. Okay? Don't scold people for being afraid. Just say, let the peace of God come to your house. Peace be with you. All right, so... We're going to close this way. You're just going to go to a pastor. They're going to pray over you. And I want you to know that I love you and that I'm praying for you. I'm here for you. We're all in this together. Amen? Amen. He will not fail us, church. Would you find a pastor once you've been prayed over? You are free to go. Love you, church.